This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at the graph editor. Now, the graph editor is another animation editor that allows us to visually see the motion of our animations in the form of a curve. Now, we'll examine the graph editor by continuing with our crow animation. And we just recently wrapped up on manipulating the crow's animation through the dope sheet. And the dope sheet gives us a very top level view of our keyframes. The graph editor is a bit more detail oriented in that not only can we see the actual keyframes, but we can also see the interpolation that is happening between each keyframe. So let's take a look. I'll select the root of my crow and we'll choose Window, Animation Editors, and choose Graph Editor. Now, since I had the crow icon selected, that automatically loaded it inside of the graph editor, which you can always select it afterwards. So I'll just deselect so you can see, and then I'll select that handle again, and it loads everything up there for me. And now let's take a look at what's going on inside of here. First, I have my work area, and this is where my animation is being displayed. And we can see the animation is showing up as a set of curves. And we'll come back to that here in a second. On the left side, we get the node that we have selected, which in this case is the crow. And then underneath it, we have all of the channels that have keyframes on them. Now, only the channels with keyframes will show up here. As you can see, inside the channel box, we have scale and visibility. They do not have keyframes. Therefore, they're not going to show up inside of the graph editor. Now, we can expose those keyframes by choosing the plus or the minus next to our node. And right now, they're set to minus, which is what happens by default. But if I choose plus, it'll just collapse, and we can't see those channels anymore. Now, the plus on the outside, the furthest to the left, if we expand this, we'll see all of the children nodes that are under my crow control. So here we have the root and leg handle, etc. And we can just scroll down there to see everything that is a child of this node. And we get also all of their keyframed channels. And we can hide those as well or collapse those by choosing the plus or expand that through the minus. Let's hide all of those and we'll just expand our current channels as well. Now across the top of the graph editor here, we have our menu set and then underneath it, a set of icons. Now all of these icons are simply the tools found under each of these menus. Now the menus have more then we have icons out here for, but these are the ones that we're going to use most often. Now back to our work area. If I want to see all of my curves there, I can choose A, which will frame all. That's just like what we would do in a perspective view. Or we can choose a single channel and hit F, which just does frame selection. I'm going to go back and we'll just select our top node, which now also will highlight all of my curves there and we'll hit A to frame all. And back in our work area, we can see a set of numbers going across the bottom and going vertically on the side. The bottom numbers give me the actual frames of my animation, while the numbers off to the left give me the values that the keyframes could be at. So across the bottom, I have basically a timeline. These are my frames. And that will go into infinity in either direction. So we do have negative and positive. Then we have the values that the keys are actually placed at. And again, they go to infinity in positive or negative. So for instance, if I select an actual key, and we would select that key by left mouse clicking, and we can either click directly on the key or draw a marquee around it or multiple keys. We're just going to choose one and it highlights, as well as the curve that is being affected also highlights. And then we can see the values for it up here in the stats menu. The first value is the location 
of the key on the timeline. So right now, this key is at 25.28 on the timeline. And we can see that there's frame 24, and it's sitting there in between frame 24 and 26. Now its actual value, we can just kind of scroll across there and see it's between 0 and 5, but up in the stats, it actually gives us the exact value, which is 2.766. Now on the key itself, let's zoom up, and let's just isolate this key. So I'm just going to choose Rotate X, and I'm just on this key now. Also to notice, we really couldn't see it before, but when I select the key, it's only showing me what is going to be affected on this particular curve. So I'll select this one here, and you'll see that that white now updates both in front and behind the keyframe, signifying that you're going to modify those values by altering the key. Let's just go back to this key here. And in addition to the actual key, which is the yellow dot there in the center when it's selected, black when it's not, there are two handles on either side of the key. These are our spline tangent handles and they control the interpolation that happens in between each key. So we'll zoom out here just a little bit. And I can grab one of these handles by again drawing a marquee box around just the handle portion, then middle mouse on the handle to move it. But I want to make sure that I have my move tool selected, so I'll just choose that, and then middle mouse, and that will cause the handle to rotate about the key. And you can see how that directly modifies all of the in-between motion between each key. And we can grab either handle, the front handle or the back handle. Again, left mouse click, drag, and middle mouse to actually move the handle. Now, moving the actual key is the same thing. We'll just select the key, and then I can middle mouse and drag it around. Now when you middle mouse, you do not have to middle mouse directly on the key. So I can middle mouse way over here and still move it. It does make it easier though the closer you are to the key to see exactly where you're placing it on the timeline or in value. Now we can also change the tangent type of the key itself. And that's what these icons up here will do. So for instance, if I wanted to flatten my tangent, we can click this icon right here, Flat Tangents, and it will level that off horizontally. And now this creates a nice transition with my key. We have a slow ease in, and then we have a ease out. So it's not taking off immediately, it's slowly ramping up and then moving on. Now we can return this, by choosing the auto tangent, which is also on by default. And auto tangent always tries to angle our tangent handles in line with the curve so that we get the smoothest transition between keyframes. Of course, that's not always what we want, so we have many other types of tangents that we can use to modify our curves. Now, we can also break the tangent handles themselves so that we can move them independently. To do this, I would select the key and choose Break Tangents. Now they're broken and I can select one handle and again using that middle mouse, move that handle so that the left side of my tangent or my ease in moves independently of the right side or moves independently of my ease out. To bring them back together, we can choose Unify Tangents, and that's this icon right here, and that will unify them. Now you can see, though, that it still keeps those tangents at the angle that they were at. And this is the same thing as this icon right here of doing a linear tangent. It tries to keep those tangents in line with its curve, but still breaks it so that you can have a different type of tangent on each side. So let's just return this back to normal, and we'll just choose Auto Tangent, and that will flatten that tangent out.
Let's go ahead and take a break now, and we'll come back and actually modify our animation now that we have a good understanding of what's happening here in our graph editor. So this concludes our first part on the graph editor.